Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a uh, Saturday night, 10.57 p.m. California time, July 12th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows, uh, let's see where we're at here. we got an earthquake of a little small point eight somewhere out here. Looks like up into Alaska there, a little green flag hiding up there. Uh, first, we're going to start off here with the earthquake activity. Continued earthquake swarming here across Mount Rainier up into the state of Washington here, this wonderful, beautiful volcano. Uh, one of the latest quakes there, little point eight. Uh, this has been, uh, I'll tell you what, rocking and rolling here for a lot of earthquake act or a lot of earthquake activity here for a number of days, approaching 500 um, earthquakes. Uh, but again, again, these uh, earthquakes that are occurring that are smaller magnitude may not necessarily be uh, listed up here on the map here. They're having some issues pinpointing every single quake that happens out there. But uh, for the ones that they are counting and have pinpointed, well, they're, you know, it's approaching uh, 500. Here's the uh, latest seismograph station there in the area of Mount Rainier in Washington. As you can see, a number of earthquakes still uh, here within the last few hours. And if you go back here to the previous 24-hour period, well, there you go. Still quite a bit uh, happening out there. Yes, it is slightly dying down, but uh, uh, it's still, you know, somewhat... Uh, somewhat active out there for sure as uh, far as any updates here go from the USGS let's see what we got they are showing the uh, the trend here right it began back on the 8th with uh, a number of earthquakes per day things are slowly going down um, but uh, it's still as I showed you guys they're still continuing uh, to uh, kick off quite a bit of earthquake activity just interested to see where this goes. I don't, you know, there's really nothing going on as far as any GPS um, displacements, as far as any inflation going on there across the volcano. It's just a, a decent earthquake swarm, one that'll probably go down into the uh, record books there. Definitely well past the 2009 um, earthquake swarm. A little bit of activity away from this area as well. Uh, 1.6 coming in there within the last hour uh, outside of Olympia. Uh, the rest of the Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. As far as any Cascadia trimmer goes, we got uh, 97 epicenters of trimmer showing up there across the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Not uh, anything of enormous value, but it is starting to kick up here a little bit. And it does look like it's uh, stretching all the way down from the south here, all the way up almost to the northern segment there of the, San of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. All right, there's the uh, Northern California earthquake activity. I was just looking at the seismograph stations here, and there was an earthquake right there on the Petrolia station uh, about 20 minutes ago. And, uh, well, that has not popped up yet. Just another earthquake here that uh, is under the radar, so to speak, as far as the preliminary data system goes. It just A lot of these little quakes don't get reported, but there's quite a bit up there uh, in the Northern California the ones that are being reported, uh, as you can see here, a couple of twos, a uh, mixed bag of deep and shallow earthquake activity there across Northern California. Uh, got the Bay Area fairly quiet. Uh, that earthquake from last night, they're just coming up on the 24 hour period here. A uh, little clustering going on there across the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. That's where we've seen the 3.5 earthquake here early this morning. That uh, about six miles deep, just off the, well, just off the creeping section. It may be associated with the Pine Rock Fault Zone there, and uh, a little bit of activity down south here towards the Parkfield segment. But right now the Parkfield section is pretty quiet, after you know seeing a number of earthquakes up there around that uh, boundary in the last couple days. Uh, Southern California, we got, uh, let's see, this 2.5 down there earlier this evening. That's uh, well, not really associated with any swarming going on. The swarming that we were watching here yesterday uh, has uh, pretty much come to a halt here, it looks like. Uh, we did pick up a number of earthquakes. It looks like uh, just about 100 earthquakes here in the mix of earthquake activity, including a 4.3, a number of threes, and a number of twos as well. It's one of the more decent swarms that we've seen out here. Uh, I'd say in, the pro in probably about a, I'm thinking about a year or so, 
So uh, definitely got you know some interesting activity, and that's part of a um, uh, a swarm that happened. Well, it's separate, right? But it's part of an overall seismic swarm that's been stirring up out here across Southern California. We had some activity up here and a bunch, I don't want to make the map cluttered, but there was a, a couple different swarming regions out here, all kind of uh, encircling the um, San Andreas Fault, Southern Branch. But so far, it is holding on. Uh, how much longer? Who knows? A couple ones out there across Los Angeles, nothing big going on. Outside of Vegas, uh, some very small microquake activity. Really nothing of any noteworthy value. Up in the Yellowstone National Park, not seeing anything show up here. So let's, uh, well, this is got to go back the previous day because we're into the next UTC time. This here is still out of whack. <laughs> Obviously, right? As uh, far as earthquake activity goes, there's not a whole lot. Um... I don't see, really see anything showing up here. Maybe one little lonesome earthquake up here, but uh, again, that's it's pretty quiet. Very minor activity there across Yellowstone National Park. Oil fields of Texas still rocking and rolling out there. Nothing new. No big earthquake activity yet. Uh, there's that one lonesome earthquake out in the Tennessee area uh, from this morning. Oh, actually, maybe not lonesome. It's got a little companion there. There, a 1.9 and a 2.2, roughly about five o'clock this morning. All right, so far as newer activity goes, let's go ahead and take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe. And uh, Middle America Trench starting to ramp up again here. Quite a good cluster of threes and fours out there. Um, South America as well, some deeper activity down here into the uh, Peru-Chile Trench, major subduction zone. A lot of deep quakes there on the uh, globe. Uh, New Zealand, some older activity there from this morning uh, around the Alpine Fault. But looks like now we got some newer adjustment going on just north of there. It's been jumping back and forth here between this area for a number of days. Uh, and of course, you know, it's, whenever things are on the uptick out here, that's when we need to be on guard. Watch for, watch for some possible larger movement out there. Uh, still pretty quiet there across Papua New Guinea area eastward up to about the Fiji Islands. It's been quiet for a number of days. As uh, far as Japan goes, it looks like we're starting to stir back up some earthquake activity there, uh, shown on the globe. So let's go see what we got. Real quick glance here at the Japan Meteorological Agency. Uh, with one of the last earthquakes there, about 9 o'clock for a 3.7. So that's it's actually come to a halt. This is my time here. So that was uh, you know coming up almost on two hours ago here. Uh, previous to that, number of earthquakes there during the 8 o'clock hour, 3.8. There's a 4.3 earlier this afternoon. Uh, a number of fours out there throughout the day today. So uh, up and down in terms of the counts and in terms of the uptick here. It's, like I say, it's just got a little pause right now. It could obviously stir back up. It's in uh, a zone here that's seen a, a lot of earthquake activity here recently. You know, a pretty good cluster of quakes down here off of the... Nankai Trough here to the south. Some working its way up there recently as well. So uh, just continuing to watch that. Uh, the rest of the area of Japan, one little earthquake, 3.8 into the Japan Trench there. Some older activity up around the Kuril Kamchatka from this morning. Uh, do have some newer deep activity here across the Philippines. Um, pretty good cluster going on there in the crunch zone. Nothing big for now, but uh, it is active. Really not a whole lot of change over here across the Mediterranean either. It's uh, just got some earthquake activity. Nothing big, nothing new. As um, far as anything um, that has to do with the Santorini area, the volcano over there, we'll just double check, see how the swarm's looking. Still got a number of earthquakes out here, 106 earthquakes. Um, and that's for the last week here. So the counts are staying roughly about the same. No new change. I mean, it's just earthquake activity after earthquake activity for a number of weeks here with no uh, no major adjustment going on. Got a little swarm stretching off here as well. Uh, up around the um, Campe Pellegre volcanic build, uh, got a couple earthquakes up here. Looks like nine events in the last uh, week or so. We don't. Uh, I don't see anything big. These are all very small earthquakes there, but uh, we'll continue to watch that as well. It's been uh, 
up and down in terms of elevated activity as well recently in that region. The Atlantic Ocean has gone super duper quiet. No new change there. And um, let's see what else we got. What do we got coming in down there? A little 4.9. That's across the um, Chile area. That's going to be this earthquake right here. Let's go ahead and check out space weather activity. See if anything is... Uh, popping here on the sun we do have uh, like i said we do have a number of active areas out here now uh big change compared to what it was here uh last week number of decent sunspots out here that are capable of producing some m flares uh you know there's a lot of these are separating here so that's not really a good sign unless we get some further growth here that would indicate uh, some magnetic complexity but i think the two main regions we need to watch right now is going to be this area uh, in this region right here, but I'm, I get my more so on this area. There's quite a bit of dynamic uh, encircling there, that uh, sunspot, and that is 4140. Uh, 4140 is, well, it shows beta, but I guarantee you it's, it's this needs to be updated there, but it is growing. Uh, so the complexity there within 4140 uh, harbors some potential for some uh, M flare activity, maybe some X flare. Uh, there is a 5% chance for X-flare activity from a number of the sunspots and uh, M-flare at 55% chance. And as you can see here on the solar flux chart, we do have quite a bit of uh, sizzling going on there. Number of M-flares and some C-flare activity. Again, a huge difference compared to you know what it was here um, previous to that within the last seven days or so. Uh, no major roars there in the forecast. Things are fairly minimal across that area for now as far as uh, viewing the auroras. As uh, far as any major severe weather in the next couple days, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's going to be fairly uh, mellow is the key word, I would say. No tornado threat, a little bit of wind, and uh, maybe just a little bit of hail threats out there for tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, not, not a big deal not a big deal at all as far as any uh, major hurricanes coming into the area let's take a look see if we got anything on the extended model not seeing anything it uh, doesn't mean it's not it won't happen though this is obviously a ways towards the end of july the waters are quite warm out there so just a matter of time before they start cooking and uh you know maybe stirring up some uh tropical systems there as uh, far as the precipitation accumulation out here over the next several runs, look at California. It's, it's just brutally hot out here right now. We're surrounded by a bunch of rice fields. Uh, that doesn't help with the dew point or the humidity. It makes it feel worse. Uh, the feels like temperature out here was 120 earlier at my place here outside of Chico. The temperature has been average, uh, uh, averaging around 102, 103 up here, a little bit hotter up in Redding. Uh, it looks like that's going to continue here for tomorrow, possibly Monday as well, before we dip back down into the mid-90s. <laughs> I do not call that a cool spell, but anyway, nothing going on there far as precipitation goes out there across the West Coast. Looking pretty dry, unfortunately. A uh, quick glance here at the fire conditions out here across the uh, state of California. Still got, wow, look at a whole bunch of them up there in Oregon burning. A couple... Big ones starting to pop up here now as well. The hot spots there on the satellite imagery is going to be these orange uh, circles there. Very active fire. The Butler fire there is at uh, 6,776 acres. 0% containment. That's deep out there in the forest. Not good. Uh, the Summit fire up there pretty hot as well. That's at uh, 663 acres. 28% containment. So they're getting a little handle, but looks like uh, there's you know still some pretty heavy duty hot spots there the green fire has just been burning like crazy up there um at least at least they're making a little pro progress five percent containment uh that does have potential to burn all the way down here into the shasta lake area so whatever trees are left out there not going to be much left if this gets down there and it looks like that is going to be able to make it down there uh, almost 10,000 acres burned. In Oregon, definitely a lot, a lot of fires up there. Southern California, looks like they're finally getting a handle on the Madre fire. That's a 77% containment. Burned 80,000 acres out there. Goodness. 
And, uh, you know, we're we're just in the kind of like in the middle of summer here. We still got uh, our rainy season really doesn't start until October if we're lucky, maybe November. So we still have all these months coming up here where we have, you know, some major, uh, major, major fire uh, issues here. Check out these fi the fuel out here. Fire danger pretty high out there across Nevada and the Southern California area here in the Sacramento Valley as well. Not going to get any better. Definitely not going to get any better. All right. So, well, we'll catch you guys out here tomorrow for the uh, Sunday morning update. Uh, take a quick glance here at the seismograph stations there. Nothing new coming in. Got one really small spike there on the Parkfield segment or Parkfield section there where that seismograph station is, but uh, nothing, nothing big happening for now. Um, what do we got? It looks like they upgraded that to 5.0, unless that's a new one there, some deeper activity. Uh, that was at 1056, so yeah, that's been an upgrade. Otherwise, that would show up as a, a new quake here, but it's not. The seismograph station is it sits a little bit further, um, I think a little bit further south of this area. That's why it's not showing up as uh, nice of a signature if it you know compared to what it was if it'd be closer to the uh, epicenter of that quake. But either way, things uh, starting to ramp up out here across the South America area. Just be on guard. Uh, Alaska, handful of small quakes up there, but really nothing big. Have a good night, everyone. We will see you guys out here tomorrow. Enjoy your Saturday night and stay safe out there.